Hey y'all, Shalice Gosana in front of the video. Welcome back. How y'all doing? What's up? As you guys can see, we're back at our regular location and I miss home already. I miss Vancouver. We had so much fun, me and my friends, going ahead to have fun in God's presence at our conference, live it loud. One thing this year, it was so much fun. And as you guys saw, I had my little sister drawing all those little cute drawings that you guys saw in my video and it seemed like you guys really like it so thank you guys so much for the support and the care and the love jesus i say thank you thank you so much honestly from the bottom of my heart thank you guys as you guys know last week we started a new mini series called girl friendships versus guy friendships last week we talked about girl friendships at length and this week we're going to be talking about guy friendships we're going to be going through the same layout where we go ahead and analyze guy friendships see common trends that we see throughout guy friendships and that we're going to be looking at it through the lens of movies and tv shows and then also comparing it to what we see in society male friendships tend to spring up from activity-based situations men gravitate to one another based on their shared interests and over time with all the different things they have in common they strengthen their friendship bond it's not really a hypothesis, but this could be as a result of young men being pushed to do a lot of extracurricular activities after school. And for that reason, they end up making friends faster that way. Like you hear a lot of best friend stories stemming from hockey that they did after school or going ahead to join sports in their school where they're meeting different people, but their shared interests make them grow and build friendships over time. And you end up seeing that throughout university, college, and even in their family life, they end up still being with those same friends based on their interests. Male friendships seem to really value loyalty, respect, and hone into the true essence of brotherhood. It is quite admirable seeing male friendships last a lifetime, but in the same breath, that is also part of the reason why they have so many issues. Male friendships, in contrast to female friendships, have a harder time holding their friends accountable to the negative behavior they would exhibit throughout their friendship. As a result, this creates more problems and issues in the friendship as their friend doesn't really know how to address certain problems they may have with their friend or things that they've noticed that they would like to change. They're afraid of how their friend is going to react and they're unaware of their full capabilities. Strangely enough, we're seeing that male friendships don't last as long and there is even a decline on male friendships overall. Some experts have even said that we are in a time of friendship recession, especially amongst male friendships. And here are certain things that they pointed out could be the cause of this. There are men out there who don't really believe in the importance of friendship. So they won't really have close friends or friends at all. They invest more into themselves and their careers. So they experience high levels of loneliness and emotional distress at times because they don't really have anyone to confide in their issues and their problems. It's just they themselves and them. <laughs> On top of this, male friendships look quite transactional and surface level after talking about women and sports and their career goals and their own personal development they don't really know anything else about the people that they're friends with so at times it feels like they don't really have a chance or space to be vulnerable or emotional with one another or you would end up seeing that women would be their ideal choice of friends they would have a lot of female friendships that allow them to have that space to be more vulnerable and emotional as women are seen to be emotional beings and can handle the variety of emotions it is quite important for us to understand that this idea of masculinity or the way us as a society see masculinity is very toxic for male friendships because them not seeing being emotional or them being vulnerable in a friendship as necessary or being feminine is part of the reason why many men feel unsafe when it comes to their male friendships and gravitate towards having romantic relationships being the safe space for them to express their feelings or burdening their female friendships with being their emotional compass in life. This idea of masculinity is robbing men of having their full experience as a human being, I have to say. Because if you believe that 
being feminine is being emotional and being vulnerable and being able to express yourself in the full varieties of your emotions it's going to stop you from really being able to understand who you truly are on the inside don't get me wrong i totally believe that we all should understand what the masculine is but we all should understand what the feminine is as well in order for you to operate as a full human being you need to express both essences in life it's understandable that yes men are raised to be like men so therefore anything that is feminine or womanly they're not taught or they don't understand the framework of it Women are raised to be more emotional. They have the chance to express their feelings and their emotions and everything like that. Even though on the downside, they're now emotionally responsible for everybody in their life. And they're given that burden and their responsibility at such young ages. It's still technically an advantage for us. However, for men, they shut out their emotions and their feelings. And it seems like the only way they have the chance to express their emotions is through anger or irritation or everything that just seems negative about emotions they have the chance to express it so they go throughout life not having any type of onus or responsibility for their emotions until they find a woman that they feel comfortable with it's quite unfortunate for those women who fall in love with men who have no idea how to express themselves and are now burdened in going ahead to try to help this man understand how to express his feelings in a manner that is not abusive or disrespectful to their partner and then you end up seeing them untangle childhood trauma and their upbringings and all the different ways that they've been hurt throughout friendships and then now it blow up in the craziest of ways in their relationship so now you are left with the emotional burden of the relationship whilst he is just like i'm a guy and i don't know how to do this and you have to help me and then nah, nah, nah. instead of you just realizing the problem for yourself on your own and trying to you know see a therapist about it or finding like-minded people to be friends with in order to help you through that like your friends are meant to be there for support for sure but going ahead to i guess emotionally dump on your friends and not having the right tools for you can really lead to serious problems in the future we as a society have to go ahead and caution parents in the way that they raise men as men and raise women as women we have to make sure that we're not going ahead to destroy their lives so early on based on the burdens and responsibilities that we're giving them and understanding that they need to have an authentic human experience that is not confined to gender affirming actions on a daily basis. At a young age, many of us have had to perform gender affirming actions from cooking and cleaning for young women or young men going ahead to do harder tasks and tough tasks in the house in order to show how strong they are, how masculine they are. And if you can't perform these duties at young ages or are able to, you know, hone into the idea of the essence that you were born with, all of a sudden you're less than, you're less than a woman, you're less than a man. And we need to get to that space as a society where we understand that we don't have to perform these gender affirming actions to affirm our identities as people you can do away with those things all right i believe that the idea of a woman being able to cook and clean helping her measure up to the women before her is ridiculous both men and women should know how to cook and clean that should be a basic human activity that everyone should know how to do or else you won't be able to survive no one wants to live in a pigsty and we ain't got money for Uber Eats every single day. Like <laughs> it's important that all of us challenge ourselves to grow and learn different things about ourselves that is not confined into defining who we are at every given moment of our lives. For movies and TV shows, the younger demographic has great representation of brotherhood and also building friendships based on their shared interests for different things. However, there are some bad apples here and there that showcase young boys liking young girls and going ahead to make them feel uncomfortable, bullying them, teasing them, 
and just in general, not really treating them like human beings. They lose this essence of understanding that they have emotions and feelings too, and you need to treat them with respect. And I feel like with that kind of representation, we need to be very wary of showing that to young kids. When we start to get towards movies and TV shows that are targeted towards teens, university students, and college students, the representation of brotherhood starts to make a huge decline. For instance, you start to see that the friendships and relationships that they're building at that time tend to surround this idea of them getting this one person that they like. So they start to scheme and they start to talk and everything like that. You don't really get to see them build the same connection that they have with the younger demographic of movies and TV shows. It's more or less very much, how can you help me in this situation? Very transactional and very shallow. Sometimes you may even see them dog out women, disrespect them and toss them to the side the minute they are not interested anymore. And they start to cheer on their wins with their friends on how they were able to get with this one person or how this person wasn't even for them anyways, but they got what they wanted and everything. All that kind of talk towards people of that age demographic is not really healthy. And on top of that, you may even see a situation arise where two friends are battling it out to get this one girl that they like, and they later realize they actually don't like the girl. Or there's one friend that actually really suits the girl perfectly. The other friend just liked her based on the fact that his friend liked her or based on the fact that she looked shiny, she looked good, she looked like everybody's desirable partner, so therefore he was after her. And seeing that is interesting, and I don't think we should take it away. However, we need to make sure that we always circle back to friendship at the end of those types of movies and TV shows. We kind of see the same layout towards movies and TV shows targeted towards adults, where the friendships are very shallow in what they talk about. Sports, women, and their careers. You don't really get a true essence of understanding what's really going on in their lives, what's really keeping them up at night. It's very much, oh, let's grab some beers and talk about how my girlfriend's pissing me off. And did you see the Knicks game yesterday? And oh, I got a new promotion at work. And they finish their beers, they finish laughing, and then they go home and you still see this deep element of loneliness in their life. How they don't really have friends to connect with them but their girlfriend comes and then now they have someone that they can talk to about their emotions and feelings and not really giving their friends the space or their friends not giving them the space to open up emotionally so if we were to look at how movies and tv shows compare with reality i think we can be honest with ourselves and say it does a really good job in showing what it really looks like for these male friendships ways that these male friendships can turn around this friendship recession is number one, aligning yourself with people who really get you. Aligning yourself with people who have shared values and morals and not just interests. Because eventually you get to a point where you start compromising on things you're not supposed to compromise on. And when you are not able to put a strong, firm no or firm stance on something, you start to allow it to breed in different ways without even realizing. You also have to get to a point where you're not afraid of calling your friends out on their foolishness. You have to be gentle, but at the same time be very assertive in the way that you're talking towards them. I'm not saying coddle their feelings, but I'm not saying break their heart. You have to know how to talk to your friends in such a way that shows emotional intelligence. Going ahead to allow your friends to behave in certain ways can eventually affect your own personal lifestyle. And last, but certainly not least, you have to sacrifice. It takes time and effort to go ahead and be a good friend. It is not easy. Friendships are time consuming and that is okay. Filling up your life with just doing things by yourself will lead to loneliness. You need companionship, you need friendship. And in order to do that, you need to sacrifice your time. And I'm telling you, when you start to invest in those who actually want to be your friend and who actually share the same values that you do, you will have a blissful time in friendship. Do you think there is a toxic mentality behind girls before hoes? The conversation of having your friends above like women or above 
possible significant others in the future. Do you think it's negative? Do you think it's positive? Do you understand where it comes from? Stuff like that? Oh, my God. Yeah. Um, so, okay. I think it depends on the timeline, right? Like, if if you're, like, I wouldn't say, like, you're in the streets, but, like, you know, you're single here and there, and... You know, it comes from the fact that, like, you know, you're you get heartbroken, but your guys are there. You know, they will, they remind you of camaraderie type stuff. Um, but when you are in a relationship and it's healthy, yeah, you need to drop that bros and four hoes. It's not, it's not that, it's not that serious at that point. Like, you have someone you care about. You just need to make more time with the person you want to build a future with. That's pretty much it. But I think prior to that, like, yes, you should, yeah, bros before hoes. You should. Um, make sure you know like reach out to your reach out to your buddies like you know how to do everything with them but like they'll they'll be there when you go through the heartbreak so stay you know you you want to make sure like okay guys are guys are guys like we're still chill we're still calm um but yeah I, but i think it it serves its purpose for a certain period of time after some time like you have to get away with that stereotype and just chill hmm. That's my okay thing. okay I too much. That's about it. okay Ah, bro, I've heard that statement a lot, and I feel it's a bit harsh, bro. Whoa. Yes, that, yes, that, it is. It's just, I'm like, ah, okay. Ah, bro, how do I say this? Um, I don't necessarily place one person above the other in terms of my friendships and relationships. Everybody, in terms of priority. It depends on priority for me. If you need my help, okay, I'll be there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really? ask you yeah for sure. All right. So, Finn, Finn, this, here's, here's the thing, here's yeah, the thing right? So, yeah. if I'm in your city, mm. if I'm in your city, right? But you're not with this girl fully. She's yeah. not your girlfriend. She's yeah. not your fiance. She's yeah, just, just, she's you're just chatting yeah. here and there, whatever. Yeah. And I'm like, Broski, I'm in your city. Like, we plan to meet up at 3 p.m., like, just to catch up on everything. Mm-hmm times mm-hmm. and you then you were like yeah yeah we're down yeah, sure. and then this bit that you, you know you're chatting with here and there she hits you up and yeah. says oh like are you are you free like you know two hours or something and it just happens to tally with the time same time uh-huh. who are you picking i don't want to necessarily say who are you pick, but okay wait chill, chill. Ask, that's chill, the quirks, bro. countdown <laughs> you're not in my city all the time so i'm gonna pick the fact you're coming to my that's city crazy. right <laughs> <laughs> like bro i'm gonna pick the fact that you're here and i'm gonna so go no, I will not postpone the meeting with you. I'll tell the the girl or my you know, girlfriend or, what, or the situation ship that I'll probably be in in that sense that oh we can do another time. It's another time. It's another time. Okay, so yeah, that's that's like, like that's it's, it's, it's that's it's the Same thing. Say like the roles reverse. For example, if I was like I lived in Europe, you know, you have a friend coming outside and she's a female, and you know what my dude is like, oh bro. Let's go out. I'm I'm more often more often than that, I'm like, let's go out together, let's just meet up, right? So it just depends on priority in that sense, right? It just and it doesn't really matter to me, to be honest, right? So yeah, that's that's just what I think. Depends on priority in my head, right? Okay. So yeah. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I think that's yeah. I mean I think that's fair. Like, yeah. yeah, it depends on priority priority. It doesn't Dudes, do they? Yeah. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't. It doesn't. It depends on priority in my head, right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It depends on priority in my head, honestly. So yeah, that's just it. I I look at the situation and I prioritize. Who do I? Who do I need to be there for at that certain time, right? So it's just prioritization, right? If my family is here, oh, everybody, please just clear the area, right? If a long time friend is there, everybody clear the area, like you know, just just just. You like, and the fact that you know you all are friends, right? Everybody should be able to have a certain level of understanding. If you are not, you're childish, anyways. But the like, um, depending on the situation, you should be able to understand where the human being is coming from, and you should give a certain amount of grace to the other individual. So it's okay in terms of priority, right? So that's just all I have to say, right? So yeah, and because we're all adults, it shouldn't be too much of a problem, to be honest. So. That's what I feel. When it comes to the mentality of bros before hoes, do you agree with it? Do you disagree with it as women? What do you guys think about it? Why are we referring to women as hoes? Wow, that's really, that's really hot. It's really hot. Yeah. Can we get some water, please? <laughs> but bros before hoes, um, I think like... Okay, obviously your friendships are important, 
but don't let that get in the way of like your relationship if it's like a good person that you found a good connection with at the same time don't like push your friends to the side just because you found the one like mm. who who is gonna be there for you you know yeah. like what happens when you're when your bae travels who are you gonna talk to mm -hmm. you know like or okay you want to do a wedding now who are you going to invite now that you pushed everyone away so yeah i think equal equal balance like obviously once you get in a relationship and you build a future with somebody and you become like husband and wife that person your partner is gonna you know increase more like because you have kids and stuff so mm -hmm. that's your more focus and stuff but mm -hmm. at the same time don't forget your friends mm -hmm. they're important too mm -hmm. okay what about you what do you think sorry could you repeat the question so essentially do you agree with the idea of bros before hoes or i don't know if there's something that us as women say in terms of that as well like like guy gals before guys i don't know like i don't know if we have something that like it reinforces sisterhood just as much as guys reinforce yeah yeah we have sisters before misters you yeah. agree with that ideology or no i feel like so like the difference in both saying is like there's some form of respect like that's given to like the men as opposed to like bros before hoes like calling women that is a bit tough mm -hmm. and I, I do think like your friendships are as important as your relationship mm. because it's just that they serve different purposes so um i think i prefer sisters before misters mm -hmm. like if they can get a cuter name mm -hmm. but i know men they're not yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that okay all right y'all thank you guys so much for watching this video i appreciate each and every one of y'all thank you so very much and our question of the day is da -da 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 what example of friendship have you seen in movies and TV shows that you absolutely love? I would have to say, for me personally, do I know any? Wait, I'm giving y'all a question that <laughs> After much thought, I would have to say Keenan and Kel are my favorite friendship duo. They were so funny and I had the biggest crush on Kel and his orange soda. But anyways, <laughs> let me know what your answer is down below. All right, y'all, it's your girl Shalisco signing out of this video. And remember, God made you special and he loves you very much and you can do anything you set your mind to with Christ, of course. All right, y'all, peace. You know what I'm talking about? Bring it back.